Why don't you stop beating yourself up because you don't perform perfectly all the time and start accepting yourself because your heart is right? When you live guilty and condemned, feeling wrong on the inside, it only makes you do worse. It takes a mature attitude to say, I am happy with who I am. I know I'm improving. My heart is turned toward God, so I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm going to enjoy where I am while I'm in the process of being changed. But too many people, they go around feeling wrong on the inside. They're so focused on their flaws, their weaknesses, what they're not. They don't like who they are. If you don't like yourself, nobody else is going to like you. You project on others the way you feel about yourself. If you feel guilty, lousy, condemned, mad at yourself because you're not far enough along, that's not only going to hold you back, you're not going to have good relationships. Quit taking inventory of everything that's wrong with you. You may have a lot wrong, but you have a lot more right with you. You are not a mistake. You have been fearfully and wonderfully made. In fact, when God created you, he stepped back and said, that was good. He calls you a masterpiece. Quit living like you're ordinary, mediocre, average, when in fact, you're one of a kind. Think of it like this. For every peace stealer you allow in your life, you are 20% more likely to live stressed, on edge, to have a crisis. I'm asking you to find happy friends. I'm not saying you have to cut people off, never speak to them again. I am saying you should put up some boundaries. You don't have to make a big announcement like I did. Just little by little, spend less and less time with that person. If you don't get the wrong people out of your life, you'll never meet the right ones. The people who are closest to you need to be stable, consistent, happy, godly, responsible people that move you towards your destiny. Like iron sharpens iron, you make each other better. And this is the reason many people are stuck. Who do you have in your life? What are you giving your time and energy to? Putting out fires? trying to keep someone happy, feeling guilty because you can't meet their demands, that's going to wear you out. It's time to make a change. You can't please everyone. When you come to the end of your life, you don't have to answer to people. You'll answer to Almighty God. Don't let what some person says or does make you feel less than, unqualified. We all have people that come against us, make negative comments, trying to discredit us or belittle us. Human nature is to get in there and try to straighten them out, prove to them how they're wrong. We think we have to defend ourselves. After all, that's our reputation. But the problem with this approach is as soon as you get one person straightened out, three more will pop up. There will always be somebody that's against you, somebody that's trying to make you look bad. If you're constantly trying to defend yourself, 
you'll get distracted fighting battles that you were never supposed to fight. It's easy to get baited into conflict, thinking, did you see what they said about me on social media? I'm going to show them who they're messing with. Do you know how much energy it takes to try to pay somebody back or to try to prove to them that you really are a nice person? You are spending emotional energy that you need for your dreams, for your goals. Here's the key. You don't have to defend yourself. God said he will defend you. He will protect your reputation. Quit worrying about the chatter, the negative comments. Those are all distractions. That's the enemy trying to bait you off course so you'll waste your time and energy involved in battles that don't matter. We don't always see how powerful we really are. God has put healing in you. Your hugs can cause people to get better. Your kind words can put people back on their feet. The scripture says a gentle tongue brings healing. A phone call, giving them a ride, taking them out to dinner, encouraging them in their dreams. There are miracles in you waiting to happen. And some people just need to know that you believe in them. When you tell them, hey, you're amazing. You're going to do great things. I'm praying for you. That may seem simple to you. But to the other person, it can be life-giving. It can help them blossom into all they were created to be. Don't worry, your time is coming. When your anointing catches up with your appointing, supernatural things will happen. Supernatural increase, supernatural growth, supernatural favor. God knows how to make up for lost time. He can propel you where you could not go on your own. The life we live, the decisions we make, should make it easier on those that come after us. When we hear the word legacy, a lot of times we think of how we'll be remembered, our accomplishments, and what we'll leave our family. That's all important, but there's also something even more significant. The scripture talks about how we can store up mercy for our children and future generations. We can store up blessings and favor by living a life of excellence and integrity that will affect generations to come. I had grandparents that prayed for me and modeled a life of excellence. You are where you are because somebody sacrificed, somebody prayed, somebody served, and now God is honoring them by releasing His goodness in your life. None of us got to where we are on our own. You've got to believe in yourself. 
You've got to believe in your abilities. You've got to believe in your service, your company, your ideas. Unquestionably, you must have faith. It's hard. Yes, it's hard. It's difficult. Yes, right. And it's worth it.